my enthusiastic learners. I'm Sasha. Ready for today's lesson? Good! It's grammar as usual and today we'll look at how the subject agrees with the verb in sentences. The subject refers to one of two main parts of a sentence. We call the other part the predicate. It is usually placed before the predicate to tell us who or what performs the action. Here, look at this. The subject of this sentence is the boys and it is placed before the predicate love playing football. Oh, by the way, can you tell me what the verb is in that sentence? Very good! It's love! Let's look at that sentence again, this time with a picture. Here's what we know. The boys is the subject and love is the verb. Now let's remove one of the boys from the picture. Now we have only two boys left. But the sentence, the boys love playing football, does not change. Okay, time to get rid of another boy. Now there's just one boy left in the picture, right? But wait! I see something different. Look, the sentence has changed. But why? Let's put both the pictures together so that we can see the differences clearly. Okay, now I see it. The plural noun, the boys, has become the singular noun, the boy. And since there's only one boy left in the picture, the plural verb Love has become the singular verb, loves. This is just a gentle reminder. Singular means one. And plural means more than one. Hmm, do you think there's a rule in there somewhere that we can follow to get subjects to agree with their verbs? Of course there is. And it's a pretty simple one. Singular subjects go with singular verbs and plural subjects go with plural verbs. Here's yet another gentle reminder. Most singular verbs take an S ending, like the word loves. But there's a catch to placing the S at the end of a singular verb. You see, the suffix S has two other forms. ES and IES. Okay, rule number one. We add ES to verbs ending in SH, CH, X, O, and SS. So, brush becomes brushes, catch becomes catches. Fix becomes fixes, go becomes goes, and kiss becomes kisses. And rule number two, if a verb ends in Y and has a consonant before it, we replace the Y with I-E-S. So cry becomes cries, try becomes tries, and study becomes studies. Let me show you a few examples of how a subject agrees with the verb in a sentence. A watermelon is a very sweet and juicy tropical fruit. A watermelon is a singular subject and so it takes the singular verb is. Watermelons are very sweet and juicy tropical fruits. Here, watermelons is a plural subject and if we follow the rule, it must be followed by a plural verb. And what's the plural verb in this sentence? That's right, it's are. Hannah is happy because she has a new bicycle. In this sentence, the pronoun she is the subject of the verb has. We use the singular verb has and not the plural verb have since she refers to just one girl, a singular subject. 
So now we know that a pronoun can also be the subject of a sentence. Pronouns are words that can take the place of nouns. So pronouns, too, can be singular and plural. I, you, he, she, and it are singular pronouns while we, you, and they are plural. My brother and I walk to school at a quarter to seven every morning. My brother and I is a plural subject because it refers to two people. So, we need the plural verb to agree with its plural subject. And the plural verb here is walk. My brother and I walk, not walks. Okay, it's time for a test. If you have been paying attention, you will be able to answer this before I can say one, two, three. Now, fill in the blanks with the correct singular or plural verb that is given. You have 10 seconds. Afik, very hard every day because he wants to do well in his final examination. Okay, if you chose studies, then your answer is correct. For those who didn't pass my little test, here's why you should have used studies. Afik refers to one boy. So, Afik is a singular subject and a singular subject must be followed by the singular verb, studies. By the way, my friends, did you notice that the Y at the end of the word study has been dropped and replaced with an IES? There are many more rules for subject-verb agreement. Do some reading to find out, okay? Let's learn some words that people usually use when talking about social problems. Watch and listen as Ari, Li Wei and Pushpa talk about the problem of bullying. Did you hear about the boy who killed himself because he was being bullied in school? Yes, it was shocking. I just couldn't believe it. And to think that he was a pupil in the school just down the road from us. Yeah, that's terrible. Hmm. But why did he ask for someone's help? Why did he confide in his parents or... or... seek the help of the school counsellor? I don't know. Maybe he was too afraid of the bullies. Maybe they threatened him or something. Maybe we should start a website where people who are being bullied can post questions and seek advice on what they can do. Yeah, that's a great idea. We can start some kind of support group to help them. Come on, let's go and talk to Chetuku Kama. He's very good in creating and designing websites. Yeah, yeah let's, let's go. go! Now, let's look at those words that popped up on the screen while the children were talking. Li Wei said that the news was shocking. This means that he was very surprised and very upset when he heard the bad news. Then Puspa used the word terrible. This means that the news was extremely bad or serious. Pushpa also asked this question. Why didn't he confide in his parents or seek the help of his school counsellor? To confide is to tell a secret to someone that you trust because you know that he or she will not repeat it to other people. When you seek someone's help, you are actually asking or requesting for that person's help. Pushpa mentioned a support group, didn't she? Well, a support group is simply a group of people who provide one another with moral encouragement, information and advice to overcome their problems. Well, do remember these words and what they mean, okay? David A. Hill's How I Met Myself is an intriguing novel. It tells the story of how a man's life changed after he bumped into, well, himself. This other self is actually what we call a doppelganger. 
a ghostly splitting image of someone that will appear as a warning of an impending disaster. This curious tale revolves around an Englishman named John Taylor. He is a computer programmer who works for a multinational company in Vachi Ucha. He lives with his wife Andrea and his daughter Katty in an apartment in Holland Ucha. Both these places are in the 13th district of Budapest in Hungary. Let's talk about the theme of this story. When I say theme, I am referring to the main or most important ideas in the story. I think that the theme of this story is determination and the importance of family relationships. After stumbling into his doppelganger on a wintry evening on the 18th of January, John became very troubled. This nerve-wracking encounter left him with many questions that needed to be answered. Questions that would agonize him for the next few years. This fueled his determination. It pushed him on and John never gave up. He did everything he could to try and unravel the mystery of that ghostly image of himself, even to the point of almost losing his wife's trust. John didn't leave any stone unturned and after much effort, he found what he was looking for. Do you have John Taylor's determination when you do something or do you give up easily? Okay, another theme that runs through this novel is the idea of strong family relationships. John and Andrea are a loving couple who dote on their only child, Katty. However, the appearance of a doppelganger causes John to become lost in his own world. He starts acting very strangely. He begins lying to his wife about his whereabouts, about having to work on Saturdays, and gives all kinds of excuses when he returns home late at night from Zolt's cafe. Though suspicious, Andrea stands by him patiently. John wasn't really doing anything wrong. He was just afraid of telling her the truth as he didn't want her to worry. We also see that John has a good relationship with his parents and in-laws as he and his family usually spend the holidays with them. Well, that was the theme for you. If you do find other themes, do make a note of them. That's all for this episode. Take care!